Hey guys, I'm Marty Geek in this video. It's been a little bit over a week. I've been using my ASUS ROG Ally, the, my Steam Deck. I've been using it for more than a year already. And I think I can share my, my personal op opinion of the ASUS ROG Ally versus the Steam Deck. You know, just in case you're on the fence of should I get the Steam Deck or should I get the ROG Ally? Should I wait? later on for another device okay so in this video let's go ahead and try and explain to you guys my opinions about these two devices so first of all i want to talk about the value that you're going to get for your money from these two devices first here on the steam deck this starts at 399 this right here is the 399 version 64 gigabytes and i've been using it for more than a year with a 512 gigabyte micro sd card and I've been having a blast. Can't complain about it, okay? But there's also a $529 version, which has a 256 gigabytes. That's a great option because it starts at 529. And there's a 649, which has a 512 gigabytes. And the huge advantage here as well, besides those prices, which are cheaper than the Asus ROG Ally, is that with any device that you get here, you're going to get a free good case for your Steam Deck. That's awesome. So here on the ROG Ally, um, there's only one now, right now there's only one version, which is $700 for 512 gigabytes. It does not include a case. I just purchased a case for the ROG Ally. It's like $40. So you have to buy a case for it to protect it. Um, it does come with a little dock, but this is, come on, this is like, eggshells this is very cheap dock but hey it comes with a little cheap dock okay um there is a 600 version coming out with 256 gigabytes of internal storage but the problem with that one is that it's going to be less powerful than this one spec wise cpu wise is going to be less than this one for example this one is capable of like eight teraflop i believe that one is going to be a capable of around two teraflops or something like that so yeah, right now, 700 bucks versus this, when it comes to the value, in my opinion, what you're getting for your money, I think the Steam Deck actually beats the ROG Ally when it comes to value. So now I wanna talk about physical differences between these two devices. And here, starting with the Steam Deck, of course, you see that the device has two trackpads in the front. Um, it's good because you can use it to try, uh, move around, you know, um, as a mouse or something like that. In the back, you have four buttons. You got four buttons that you can program or use it for any other game, right? But keep in mind, I've been using it for more than a year. Like I said, I barely use my trackpads and I barely use the rear touch buttons. I never use the rear touch buttons at all. The ROG Ally actually feels really awesome, especially when you grab it for the first time after using this for a while. You're gonna don't notice right away that it is smaller it is slimmer and also it weighs a lot light, uh, lighter as well it's, it comes at 608 grams um, this all here in the top has a fingerprint uh, scanner which lets you unlock the device using your fingerprint has all these you know ios here the port for the usb c you can also attach a, a, a an external gpu which is very very expensive and you also got the access for the micro sd card there also here in the back instead of having four rear buttons you have two rear buttons but keep in mind i've been using these rear buttons more in a week more than i've been using my steam decks buttons on the back and the trap pack combined than these buttons on the back especially because they have shortcuts like for example if i press it and hold it and press the a it takes a screenshot, right? If I press the UI, it starts recording. If I press, that's during gameplay, I guess. Uh, if I press here, it opens Task Manager. If I press up, it opens the keyboard. Um, if I'm in Crate, right? If I'm in Crate and I press like this, it all goes to the desktop. If I'm in Crate again and I go like this, it opens the multi windows that lets you choose you know what windows you want to play or what device you want to choose right oh by the way the rgb sticks here you can customize it you can make it look however you want and it has a round um, directional button which for me i prefer for fighting games for fighting games i prefer this one 
over this, the more conventional one. And I also like the thumbsticks a lot better, the way they feel a lot better than the Steam Deck as well. Same thing goes with the triggers. I think the triggers feel really awesome. Pretty much almost similar. I think the, I think, yeah, I think the these feel a little bit better. Yeah. So yeah, when it comes to physical differences wise, I honestly prefer the, the ROG Ally, definitely. So now when it comes to screen between these two devices, uh, the Steam Deck actually has a seven inch screen, 1280 by 800 P 60 Hertz, 400 nits and brightness. And the screen is actually 16 by 10, which makes it look a little bit more squarish when it comes to the conventional size of the screen or ratio of the screen, because this screen is actually a 16 by nine, right? So it's a little bit more wider than um, squarish. I prefer it this way. Also, it's a seven inch, just like the steam deck, 1920 by 1080 P 1920 by 1080 P, which is awesome. And this device is also capable of 120 Hertz, 120 Hertz is 500 nits. So it gets a little bit more brighter than the steam deck. So when it comes to screen, I actually prefer the ROG Ally because yes, not every game you can play it at 1080p, 60, 120 hertz, but there's a couple games, cheap games or indie games that you could play at 120 hertz. Like you see here in the video, I'll be sharing a little bit of gameplay of Dead Cells. And it is amazing being able to play a game like Dead Cells, 1080p, 120 hertz, even running at low wattage that is really really awesome so when it comes to the screen differences between these two devices i do prefer the rog ally so now let's talk about the os differences between these two devices first of all on here over here on the rog ally you're running windows 11 so if you use a windows 11 laptop before or computer you know what you're getting yourself into of course uh, it has for the gaming section it actually has the armor crate that way you can manage around your games and your launchers and all that. And the huge advantage that this has is that you can install any launcher from any company, Epic, Ubisoft, EA. Oh, look at this. It keeps launching like this for some reason. So you can actually download and install any launcher that you want here on this device. And the huge advantage of this is that you don't have to go through hoops and loops and watch tutorial videos to learn how to install Xbox Game Pass games directly here because it works just like it works on your Xbox console or on your PC. You just open it up, look up for a game, whatever game you like, you just hit download and it downloads straight to this device, which is amazing like for example if I, right now if i want to download uh let's say i want to download trick to yomi i could go ahead and just install i could choose below location i want to an external card if i want just hit install and that's it that's all you have to do there's nothing more tricks and and, and loops you have to go through to do uh, launchers and Xbox Game Pass on this device. That's the great thing about it. Now here we're running SteamOS, which SteamOS here, the game management system, I do prefer it over the ROG Ally. I think this looks way better. I love that. I love how the library you can access it and access all the games that are verified, the games that are not verified, and all you can access all your whole library. I really love this, how the way it looks, right? But it's actually running Linux, not Windows. So the problem with Linux is that you have to watch tutorial videos and all that to install uh, launchers, like the Epic Launcher, Ubisoft Launcher. You have to install uh, those devices by going through hoops and loops, right? Also, even if you go through hoops and loops here to get your Xbox Game Pass on this device, this would only be clouds only. Yes, you can play Xbox Game Pass here, but it would only be cloud only. You can only stream your game. So that means you need internet connection all the time to play these games here. That kind of sucks because it would be awesome if you can natively install them. Once you install them, go offline and play your games on the go. ROG Ally, you can do it. Here, you cannot do it. So for me, that's a huge advantage that the ROG Ally has, and I have to give it to the ROG Ally.
Now, when it comes to battery life, these two devices actually have in the inside very similar batteries. Like I think it's like 40 watts per hour battery on these two devices. This one actually comes with a higher charging block or 65 watt. This one comes with a 45 watt charging dock. Okay, but that doesn't matter. Okay, because when it comes to gaming, a lot of people used to say that this has a bad battery life or it has bad battery life. But if you're one of those that think that this has bad battery life, well, keep in mind, this has a horrible battery life compared to the Steam Deck. If we're going to compare them, it has a horrible versus bad. Okay, so why do I say that? Because this one on the Steam Deck, I usually get between two hours and a half to four hours and a half, depending on the games that I'm playing, right? Also, one of the reasons why this device stays, you know, doesn't, it's not that bad at battery life compared to the ROG Ally is that because of the, uh, when it comes to the thermals, the TDP, uh, it goes the max to 15 watts, right? And you can go ahead and take it all the way down to 3 watts. That's a huge advantage because depending on the games you're playing, you can adjust that and get better battery life. So this actually gives me good battery life. Um, over here on this device, I've been getting between 1 hour of battery life up to two hours of battery life, depending, of course, on the games that I'm playing. If I'm playing a hardcore AAA game, you're, you're lucky if you're gonna get one hour of battery life. If you do a light game, old game, or take down all, all the specs, 720p, 60 hertz, and do all the, the tips that I've been showing you guys on how to save battery here, you're lucky if you get two hours of battery life, okay? But it all depends on the games you're playing, right? But when it comes here to the command center, you can actually change the wattage here, the TDP from, you got 15 watts, you got 25 watts, it takes you to turbo, which is great for when you play high demanding games. And you got 10 watts, which is great for you when you're playing indie games. But um, in, indie games, you can play for with less than three watts, like you see over there on the Steam Deck. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why it's, it's not that good when it comes to battery life. And, of course, Windows 11 is not actually optimized to be on mobile devices. So, but Windows is actually working on an operating system or Windows 11 for mobile devices, which, when that comes out, I think is going to get better battery life. When the latest uh, BIOS actually comes out as well, it's going to get better battery life. It should get better battery life as well. So this device can actually get some improvements. But right now as it is, I'm getting between one hour and two hours, if you're lucky, of gameplay on this device. Luckily, it actually does charge fast. That's one thing about it. So when it comes to battery life, I have to give it to the Steam Deck. Now, of course, one of the reasons why the ROG Ally has bad or worse battery life than the Steam Deck is because the power that it has in the inside. Uh, this thing has an AMD Ryzen Z4 CPU with RDNA 3 GPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So it's also great because it's future-proofing the device. You know, you're going to be able to play with this device a lot longer in my opinion because um, all you have to do is play around with the specs of the game or graphic options in the game And you should have no problems playing video games here on this device um, Now and later on in the future. That's one thing uh, Why this burns a lot of battery life and also keep in mind. I'm running here the latest BIOS that's the BIOS 319 I believe that it's also preventing this device to performing better when it comes to gameplay and maybe it might be also affecting the battery as well so this is a device that still can get upgraded or better during time uh, when it comes to the steam deck this has a custom amd ryzen zen 2 and it has rdna 2 gpu and a 16 gigabytes of ram just like the ROG Ally, go and here. I have no problems playing video games here. I very, I've been very impressed with this device because with you know, there's a lot of games that are verified playable, but there's a whole bunch of games that are not supported, but still playable here. Like WW2K, right now, like see right there it says it's unsupported, but I've been playing this game since it came out, and it plays amazingly good i have no complaints about playing this game on this device so even though this has not the same spec or as good here it does benefit the device because you know the specs 
with the device and the games being uh, verified playable and all that it helps the device perform pretty good but honestly if this gets a better bios and windows gets better update this by far is going to be better than the steam deck also before i finish this video i have to talk about the audio because the audio here is by far better than the steam deck this has two speakers it has a speaker here speaker here and those two speakers are actually Dolby Atmos, okay? So the audio here sounds incredible when you're playing video games, watching videos, and all that. Here, it has two speakers here, but they are just stereo. They're just stereo speakers. Uh, and when you compare them, or when you come from this to this, the differences in audio is going to be amazing. And I'm just going to show you guys a little bit here how they sound. So yes guys those are my opinions when it comes to the differences between these two devices now right now you might be asking but which one would you pick right which one would i pick if i can only have one right now if i can only have one right now i would honestly pick the rog ally right even though it's more expensive as bad battery life compared to the steam deck i would choose this device because in my hands it feels a lot better than the steam deck built wise it feels a lot better than the steam deck i can install any game any launcher on this device including which is a huge deal in my opinion xbox game pass natively here on this device that for me is a huge advantage that this has okay if the steam deck if i was capable on the steam deck capable of it easily install xbox game pass natively here and i could go install any launcher that i wanted natively here without going through hoops and loops things would change honestly i would then choose this device because i'm getting all that plus better battery life okay this i could do it all i could do it all right now at this point today i could do it all right now yes it has worse battery life but i can do it all right now on this device i still love my steam deck and still gonna play video games here as i can but this is gonna steal a lot of time from that because of the xbox game pass natively being able to download the games here so yeah but of course everybody has their own different opinions so let me know in the comments what you think about my opinions about this device and which device would you actually choose if you only had the option to buy only one of these two devices and you can actually afford it okay thanks for watching this video until next time bye bye